Okay. Thank you, everyone, and welcome. Call this meeting back to order at 6.36 p.m. We are in executive session for the purpose of discussing negotiations with the union. I will start by saying, in accordance with Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, signed by Governor Baker on June 16, 2021, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Law Chapter 30A, this meeting of the North Reading School Committee is being conducted with some remote participation. While in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted and a quorum of the school committee will be in person, this meeting is concurrently being presented through a Google Meet and or by a live broadcast by NORCAM to allow the public and any school committee members who cannot attend to participate. I will say for the record that our assistant superintendent, Mr. Connolly, is on the, on the Google Meet and one of our school committee members, Chris Papavasilio, is as well. The rest of us are in person. Welcome, everybody. <clears throat> so we're going to go a little bit out of order. We like to you know, let our guests co go first. Um, but we're going to start really quickly with public input, um, and then we'll get to the guests. So do we have any public input? Anybody that has a comment, question, thoughts that is not on the agenda tonight? Seeing none, we go to the student report, and we do have a student report tonight, I believe. So if you want to come on up, up here, say your name for the record, and get our student report, and then we'll come to our guests. Hello. Come on, Gianna. My name is Gianna Nalivo. Nice to see you guys in person. Crazy aren't just floating shoulders and heads. Um, uh, we recently went back to school, and as a senior, I am so, so excited to be back in the building because everybody is back, and it just feels like school again. G Gianna, just for NORCAM, this is how they hear. So if you want to, you, you get to sit right with us if you'd like. Sure. Have a seat. Just because that's how NORCAM will be able to broadcast. So OK, sorry. Um, but yeah, the first day of school was awesome. We are so excited to be back in the building. Um, the COVID precautions, just a little bit about the safety procedures going on in school in regards to like the cafeteria, we can only sit like every other seat. I think that it's going great. A lot of people are taking well to the new procedures and closely following them. Um, some fine arts matters. Today was the first session of auditions for this year's musical, Newsies, if you didn't know, very excited. Um, also, you're gonna hear a little bit more about this today, but we are also in the process of planning the Haunted Playground, a uh, familiar fundraiser. Um, jazz band auditions are soon, and they will be rehearsing soon as well. They're great if you haven't seen them. Very fun to listen to. More on band, marching band has been practicing in preparation for the first home game. And our first home game is Friday the 17th. Very excited, wear your green and gold, <laughs> go Hornets. And I have a note here that the student section is very, very excited. Um, last thing on my agenda was parking, the new parking, um, procedures where parking spots are assigned for both students and faculty and also there's a new route to drop off your students at the high school and middle school has been going great um, the assigned parking spots have really alleviated much of the stress of getting in and out of the parking lot and that's all I have excellent so you're a school committee member already you're pandering to the people that are here yeah you know, <laughs> So, comments, questions from the committee? I mean, I'll ask him. You mentioned the, uh, so do you have a parking spot? So you drive I do day? have a parking spot, yes. <laughs> and that's working well coming in and out. I, I came, I was the dork that was just walking around today, <laughs> just watching it, how it, how it went. But um, it, it, you think it's going pretty well? Yes, I think that it's going pretty well because nobody's, at least the turnaround and going the wrong way is very minimized, whereas sometimes people would just go in circles trying to find a parking spot. Right. Now you know, I go down, I take a left at the first one, and I'm in my spot. So yeah. I think how, about, how about departures? How's, how's that going versus? Um, I'm a Drop very busy. seemed pretty easy this morning, but I don't know about picking Yeah, up. I'm a very busy person after school, as much of my classmates are. So I think for the most part, a lot of upperclassmen who drive are staying in the parking lot which I think is doing very good for traffic. Okay. Yes. And how was the, um, sorry, the allotment, was it just drawn uh, to get the parking spot? 
Oh, so first come. the um, upper lot is reserved for seniors through the 1st of October, and the lower lot is juniors only right now, and then there's some spots down there reserved for seniors, but the, the senior class officers actually worked with the high school administration to work out senior parking spots so that we could park with our friends, which was a very big topic for the <laughs> high school. Excellent. Great. Well, good. Well, thank you very much. Thank Next you very much. Report, and yeah, it is. Back. Thank you. Thanks, Jamie. Okay. We're going to start, as I said, with new business. And I see a bunch of people here. And on, on the Zoom meeting, I know we are going to recognize that this is a great idea. I don't know who came up with it. It wasn't me, but I, I'm happy to take credit for it. But uh, recognition of professional status educators. And this is Dr. Daly's idea. Sure. Thanks. And it's it's honestly it's it's something that I you know when I see a really good idea you you steal it and uh, the the district that my brother works in in New York this is something they did and I just thought this was something nice to do you know we have so much effort we put into our new hires we have a mentor program we've now developed that mentor program to be a three year mentor program we've aligned all the hard work in year one you get paired with a mentor you then have a series of meetings where you're meeting with folks. Uh, you know, it's a little bit front loaded, but it's essentially, you know, once a month, you get a lot of information in a short time. In years two and three, there's some other kind of trainings and programs that continue that support. And over that time, you know, teachers are getting observed. They're doing multiple formative assessments and summative assessments through the Edaval system. And it's really about at the end of the at the end of the three years determining whether there's a commitment both sides. They're, you know, and I think the, the the educators are committing to our district for the hopefully their career. And we're, we're making a, a commitment as well with professional status. And I think to celebrate that, um, you know, I read you the names when we hire people, but I think it makes sense to kind of recognize the people that are, that are here with us at professional status. Some of you are with us here tonight. Some are on the call. Some of the teachers um, may not be here or may be joining a little later because they're doing other things. These are all, uh, a good number of these educators are names that are not just in the classroom, but they're busy in extracurriculars, athletics, um, band, um, uh, many different positions throughout the district, and they've done a great job. And I think it's just uh, something we're going to do to recognize. So I'm just going to read the names, and we can kind of just go through and maybe round of applause, and if there's anything you all have to say. Um, but I'll start with at the, at the bachelor school, Jennifer Peterson, uh, Christina Petri, Jessica Scioli. The hood school, Kelly Costa, Rebecca Moscarello. The little school, Emily Barrett, Catherine Polcari. At the middle school, Tristan Irish, Heather Maiola, Benjamin Owens, and Benjamin Pershaws. At the high school, and, and Ben is uh, middle school and high school. He's listed on here under middle school. High school, Camille Craig Coleman, Tom Ledoux, Caitlin O'Donnell, Justin Reddington, and district-wide, James Segroy, who's a digital learning specialist. So congratulations to all of you. We're very happy to have you. <laughs> It's just a simple moment of recognition. I don't know if anyone had anything to add or. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'll, I will always jump in and say something. Um, what I think is really nice here is I haven't been here that long. You know, my kids are, first one just got to middle school last year. And, you know, it's amazing. Like, I probably know about half of the teachers on here just from a lot of it from being here. Because what's really nice about, you know, some of the teachers is people come into this district and they don't hesitate at all. I mean, Mr. Owens, I've seen probably more than any teacher. He's a newer teacher, you know, he's here for many, many things. He's come for different programs. He's always here, like, I mean, I, two of the teachers at the little school my kids had, so I knew him that way as well, but I just think it's great. I mean, like, I, and I think there's a camaraderie amongst the staff here. Like, I went to the orientation, although, for the record, I was late because Dr. Daly gave me the wrong time, <laughs> so I didn't show up late to your orientation on purpose, but, um, but it was nice. Like, you walk in and it was like a, like, you can see how much the, the staff support each other here. You know, people were really excited for everybody else here, and they were just, you know, giving lots of applause. And I just think it's great. I mean, I think it's a great mix that I've seen here about, uh, you know, about newer teachers and more professional and, and experienced teachers working together. And so thank you and welcome. And I'm glad that these people we will have for many more years. Yep. Anybody else? <coughs> Thanks, I'm the only one saying anything. Well, <laughs> Thank you all very much, yep. guys. I mean, we do want to recognize you, and I know it's a you know it's a really nice, important uh, moment for you guys. And 
hopefully we keep you for many, many more years and yep. someday years from now we'll be handing you a ball when you retire. <laughs> <laughs> congratulations. Yeah, congratulations to all of you. Yep. Okay. Have a Thank wonderful you all year, guys. everyone. Thank you. Yep. Have a great year. <laughs> okay. Moving on, we have some people here. I see Mrs. Kane and some other people here I know for the haunted playground. And by the way, if any teachers are here just for that, feel free to leave. You guys don't have to stay here. <laughs> we just really wanted to recognize you. Thank you. <clears throat> Do you okay. like me to advance the slides or you guys? Thank you good? You. Okay. Uh, Hello again, my name is Gianna Nalivo and I'm a senior and the president of Masters Club. Uh, we are so excited to talk to you about the Haunted Playground in 2021 this year. Uh, it will be held at the Batchelder School on Saturday, October 23rd from 5.30 to 9. Hello, I'm James Dillon. I'm a sophomore and I am the underclassman representative for Maskers. The history of the haunted playground, we didn't start it. In 2004, Martin's Pond started it to raise money for their playground. In 2016, the middle school took it over. Um, and in 2019, we took it over, renaming it the haunted playground. In uh, 2020, we changed it to the haunted walkthrough for COVID. <laughs> Some of you might remember. And this year, we'd like to continue the, the tradition of the haunted walkthrough with you guys. Haunted walkthrough this time? Uh, haunted oh, playground. Haunted playground. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm going to talk a little bit about our layout and our map. So as you can see, this is an overhead of the Batchelder School with the playground being in the <clears throat> top right over there. Uh, down here in the, t in the bottom left, you're going to see the maze. Uh, the blow-up maze, which we had last time, and behind there is a, going to be the big generator, which is our power source. Uh, as you move a little bit towards the right here, right along that, that fencing, you're going to see some um, free entertainment up until you hit food. That's our food section over there, and then you can keep going up until the blacktop area, which are, is where the magician is going to be and the dance parties and parades and all that kind of stuff is going to happen there as well. Uh, that big yellow thing labeled NRFD light is going to be a big light that is going to be illuminating the park and the blacktop area right there, provided by the North Reading Fire Department. Uh, kind of circling backward, back towards where we started, is the check-in table and the welcome area. That is one of two entrances and exits. The other one is r straight across where the um, fencing ends right there. Uh, this big green area with the arrows is the skits area. There's going to be three tents right there for that purpose. Um, these orange arrows that you see here are the shuttle route. So the shuttle route will stop to drop people off right at the check-in and uh, first aid tent area and go back up to pick people up. The red line denotes the handicap parking. The, sorry, I missed a few things up top, but the uh, orange box up in the top left is the horse carriage check-in. Uh, it's a carriage ride. They'll talk a little bit more about that later. And then the um, restrooms are also inside of the bachelor school. Cool, that should be it. Thank you. And I assume the parking's at the high school? Yes, parking yeah. will be. And that's where the shuttle's here. coming from, yeah. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Caroline Schleinhofen. I am a senior and I am the treasurer of Maskers. And uh, for this event, we're going to have a wide range of entertainment, both student run and um, from some outside sources that are all relatively local to the North Reading area. It was very, the way we ran it was very successful in 2019. So we are trying to get a lot of uh, what we had in 2019, trying to bring a lot of the same people back. 
because of them being from a relatively close area, they really understand the community feel that we want this event to have. And uh, yeah. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Lucy Wagner. I'm a junior and I am Masker's upperclassman representative. So along with some of the stuff we bring in from outside, our club members all participate in our student run entertainment. We have some SNL inspired style comedy skits. We have ghost stories, face paint. Um, we have walking characters, students dressed up, as well as Aslan, who is a character um, from The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Um, we have a princess dance party on the blacktop, a scavenger hunt where kids go around and meet the characters. We have a stage for musical performances that includes North Reading's Notorious, as well as some groups from other surrounding towns. We have some projections. Kids can participate in a costume closet and a red excuse me, costume parade in a red carpet. And we also have custom-made midway games that are run by students. Hi, uh, my name is Brian Conlon. I'm a sophomore and I'm the historian. Uh, so for food, we know that's a big thing with COVID. Uh, so we're, we're, going, we're talking to the Board of Health and Mr. Bracey right now to get all, to get all the permits, stuff like that, uh, to be safe. We did get the uh, ability to do hut food this year. So like two years ago, so that should be good. Uh, we do understand though that if the numbers trend upwards, we will. We might have to cut that and just do cold and packaged food, stuff like that. But as of now, we do have hot food. Uh, we're getting two things from outside sources for the food. We have a hand washing station supplied by New England restrooms and the food warmers and storage, which will be provided by Horseshoe Grill. Um, in addition to the food that we're making, uh, we hopefully will get donations of hot food from local restaurants. So that happened two years ago, it was pretty good. Um, everything will be labeled for food allergies. Uh, I have a food allergy myself, so I know that that's an important thing. Uh, and we'll also have uh, adult volunteers working with Safe Serve Certified. Uh, so anytime there's someone serving food, there will be a certified person there. Uh, you can see down there is the main tent stuff. So that's all the hot stuff, um, the stuff that needs to be made. You can see on the concessions, that's all the cold stuff. And that will be the stuff that will serve if we can't do hot food. Uh, so that's in little areas. And then on the right, it's paper goods, so that's all the, you know, plastics, paper, stuff like that, the trash. Um, and yeah, that's about it for food. Thank you. Um, I'm Mason Murray, and I am a junior, and I am vice president of Maskers, and I'm going to be talking about uh, the logistics of the event. Um, so as you saw before on the map, we have tents. We're thinking about getting 16 tents. Uh, Gianna showed the skits as well as the food and the midway games that we're thinking about having. Um, and we also are doing generators, as you saw on the map. Um, this year we're going to do one generator, uh, whereas in 2019 we had really small generators spread out all throughout the event, and it just made a lot of noise. And so Mr. Campagna uh, suggested that we use one big generator uh, for 2020, which was last year for the haunted uh, walkthrough, and that went way better, way quieter, and it just worked so much uh, better. And we're doing 100 foot uh, cords with a spider box um, that go to the food and the acapella, as well as another 100 foot cord with a spider box that goes to skits. And a spider box is basically just a um, sort of smaller box that connects from the main generator to um, just the skits that we need them to go to. And on them are outlets that are plugged into the wall. and. They have GFCIs, which are ground fault circuit interrupter interrupters, and that just makes it way safer for anyone there. It just means that you can't get hurt, and it, it ensures that. Uh, there's signage. We have parking, prices, instructions, and shuttle and bathroom signs. Um, these signs are going to be put out all throughout the vicinity. Um, they're just going to have basically everything that's up there on them. Um, the bathroom signs will have, uh, you, you do need to wear your mask in the batch, so, and that's where the bathrooms are. So we're thinking about putting uh, mask signs on the bathrooms because we still can't walk into the batch without masks. Um, the parking, as Gianna said, will be available in the upper and lower lot of the high school. And the shuttle is the school van, and it'll be operated by our lovely janitor, Rick Smith. Um, you will need to wear your mask on the shuttle. Um, it's just another protocol uh, still. And we are working towards getting all of the necessary permits that we have for this event. Um, we're really close to getting them. And um, the people that are needed to run this event 
are about 50 to 75, and every Maskers member uh, is going to be participating in this event, uh, as well as some Maskers parents volunteers. And then we're thinking about uh, opening this event up for upperclassmen for volunteer hours. So that's it for logistics. Hi, I'm Christina Musgrave. I'm a senior and I'm the secretary of Maskers, and I'm gonna be talking about safety. So obviously a big thing this year and in the past year it has been COVID. And as my fellow officers have said before me, we will be wearing masks on the shuttle and when you go into the batch because we're still dealing with COVID, it didn't go away. And also Gianna mentioned that there's a first aid table. It's right when you walk in. So everyone that comes in will know where it is. So if they need it, they know where it, it is just in case of an emergency. We have been communicating with the authorities and we will have two policemen on uh, doing details and we will have the giant firelight just so we can see everything, know what's going on, know where all the kids are. Fire extinguishers will also be provided to all the stations just to keep everything safe. They're up to code, they're not expired. Everything's safe with those. And walkable wires such as the ones coming from the spider box will be flagged or covered just to like minimize tripping hazards and things like that. The tents are gonna be all properly weighed down just so there's no risk with that. Everyone stays safe, things like that. Also, the entire, the entire event will be um, kind of fenced off with black fencing. There is uh, a hidden exit just in case anything should go wrong. We can evacuate quickly out of the two exits that there will be. There will also be a hand washing station at the food so everyone washes hands, keeps, keeps germs low. And there will also be um, hand sanitizer at every station, keeping everything safe again. And there, we did have about a thousand people uh, attending last time, but that's staggered throughout the uh, from 5.30 to nine o'clock window. So that's about uh, 400 people an hour, and we are still trying to keep people safe, people distance. And there will also be no dog led because the magician is going to be possibly bringing a rabbit, and there will be small animals, uh, small children, sorry, and just families around who want to keep them safe, keep them away from any risks. Uh, this is our final slide, just kind of wrap things up, but uh, it's just a contact list of everyone that has helped us. Uh, it's probably my favorite slide because it shows how many people in this community truly put work in to make this North Reading a better place to live and be a part of. So you guys are up there as well and we wanted to thank you for your time and thank you very much for all of your help and for listening to our idea that we were very excited about. Excellent. Thank you very much. Great presentation as always from you guys. <laughs> Questions? Comments? Diana? I could just say I'm excited that it's back, you know, to what it was in 2019. I, I brought my kids down that year and they had a blast and I thought it was so well done and obviously the preparation that goes into this is impressive. Um, so I'm excited. Thank you guys for doing this and for speaking about it. Thank you. Yeah. We're Rich? Very excited. Yeah, I think it, it's, a, it's a great uh, uh, program. I'm excited that it's back in its full form. I, I did have a question about the generator and the electrical setup. Um, it, how much, it, who's responsible for the, the sort of, the generator is presumably going to be delivered by whoever is providing it. Are they going to be helping with the setup or is that, do you guys take over at that point? And also once everything's set up, is it going to be inspected by anyone in the town in terms for, especially electrical is kind of, has been sticking in my head since you mentioned the generator. Yes. So our generator is provided by a company, of course. It's not a, um, like yeah. it's not like a parent donation or right. anything. Yep. But um, yes, they do help us with setting it up. Okay. And there will be, of course, adults will be handling sure. our electrical. <laughs> yep. We won't be sending our freshmen to go do that. <laughs> but the, uh, yes, Tyler Bellavance is a alumni of not only North Angle High School, but he is a Maskers alumni, and he'll be coming back this year to be our technical director. Nice. And he is actually an experienced electrician. He is actually in the field of electricity, so. That's awesome. Nice. Yes. That's awesome. Well, uh, well, I have a couple of questions, and, and I'll start with a comment. Where I, I went last year, and I went the year before. I froze my butt off last year. Did not <laughs> dress warm enough, but um, it was, it was, Cold, but it was great. It was good last year, considering the, the limitations. But it was really good two years ago. Um, 
So is it going to be like the last time where it's free to come in and wander around, but then there's tickets to certain events? Yes. Okay. So admission to the actual event is free, but there are, and there will be free entertainment. Again, it's a community event. We really want to give you guys the most. But um, there will be a few things that you can pay for, like food and the skits and, yeah. Okay. And so, like, when you're saying staggered entrance, I know the last time there was staggered entrance to the skits and things like that. Will there be staggered entrance to the general thing or just to the just to the skits and, and that part of it? Um, so there's no actual like time ticket time for you to come into the event, but the shuttle can only take so many people at once. So in a sense, it is staggered because you either have to walk into the event from going around, but we would prefer that you use the shuttle just because it is the safest option. Okay, and I missed this probably on the first slide. What day is this? Uh, the 23rd of October. October 23rd. From 5.30 to 9. Okay. Rain date? Um, we do not have a rain date at this time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so do we want a motion to approve this officially? Yes, I think. Sure. I'll just add that I spoke yep. with the um, police chief, fire chief, director of public health, town administrator, public health nurse this morning on our routine calls. And I, without giving them the full presentation, I gave them the ideas behind it, and they're all in full support um, that this can go back and resume with, with the restrictions in place. I think with the overall caveat of, you know, October 11th, we might get some new guidance about outdoor gatherings or something, and we're going to have to adjust if we need to. But I think everyone's in full support. And just, you know, again, great job presenting. And, the, you know, the, the civics lesson of all these people and their roles in town and learning how they work and, um, how many different uh, eyes need to be on something for it to be safe and successful. I think it's a great learning experience, so great job. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, so I will entertain a motion to approve this year's Haunted Playground. I move that we approve the uh, Haunted Playground as uh, presented. And I will second. Okay, and we'll do a roll call vote. Rich? Aye. Janine? Aye. Diana? Aye. Chris? Aye. And I'm an eye as well. Five zero. Thank you guys. Great presentation. Yeah, Thanks thank everyone. You. Okay. Good luck. Hope you make lots of money. Great <laughs> <coughs> job. Great job. Okay. Great job. We should get coins or something for the uh, staff. Thank you. thank you. Have a great thank night, you guys. Yeah. Thank you. We should get coins or something to give to the staff members, just to give them something when they come. The professional staff. Yeah, yeah, we can definitely think. Of it. <laughs> yeah, you so, yeah. rather than just coming in and we're like, yeah, yeah, we should do something for them. Medallions. Yeah, something. like chocolate-covered coins, can candy things. <laughs> like, what kind of coin do you? I don't know, just some recognition, like fifty-cent piece, dollar. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, well, we are back, so we're going to go back to the top now. We're gonna to go to the reopening update and I will turn it over to Dr. Daly to give us our update today. And Mr. Connelly as well, I'm sure. Thank you so much. So um, we have had um, very successful opening to school. We had um, a lot of new variables, some of them introduced at the very 11th hour. Um, and we've, I think we've adjusted really well. Our principals have done a fantastic job. Our custodians getting our schools ready. Um, you know, I, I typically meet with our, with our student representatives the day before the meeting. I did not meet with her. I did not um, tell Gianna to say that about the, the parking situation. I think, <laughs> I think we've obviously, you know, day one, there were certainly a lot of uh, issues as, as we tried it out and learned. I think we have had adjustments. The morning seems to be going pretty smoothly. I know that um, Ms. Boutwell has been in the line, so you can probably give us some insider, but it's gotten better every day. The afternoon still needs, there's work that needs to be done, but it has got better every day to the point today was at 15 minutes for dismissal. Um, now, again, there's still some time getting actually out with the lights, but the lot was cleared and the pickup line was done within 15 minutes, which is getting much closer to, you know, to where we want to be and with a much larger campus. I know a lot of people have asked, you know, well, can't we just move one of the times by 10 minutes or something? But the, you got to, everyone needs to need to understand there's a huge ripple effect there. We wouldn't be able to only adjust it by 10 or 15 minutes. If you were doing separate dismissals, you'd need separate bus runs. Um, and we're talking at least a half hour or so on both sides for the morning and the afternoon. So there's a lot of different impacts. And then there's many other things, sports, extracurricular activities, teacher contracts. There's so many different things that are impacted. So 
for all the heavy lifting um, and, the, and the pieces that um, pick up folks or, or parents dropping off may not see is what she spoke to with having an assigned space, less issues coming in and out. Um, we also made everything a one way. So there were a lot of you know little accidents. There were other things um, including people kind of cutting through. You're never supposed to go out Oakdale or come in Oakdale. Um, that's completely blocked off. So that slowed everyone down a little bit the first day, but I think overall the, you know, we met throughout the summer, police, fire, everyone working together. And I think we have a plan. We, we're gonna continue to tweak it, but I've asked for everyone's patience. And I think, I hope people are at least seeing it's getting better every day and we're continuing to work toward that. So um, I don't know, while, while we're talking about it, I don't know if anyone else wanna talk about that piece of it. Um, Diana, you wanna start? Oh, I can just say that the minute you said that the kids could come a little earlier and that you opened up, I think it was the gym or something like that, then yeah. that next day, which was the second day of school, it was light years different in the yeah. morning. Yeah. Like, so that was nothing. Um, I, I was just, I was more curious. I, I have to get there early for a variety of reasons, but I, when every time I pull in around the back, I see those parking spaces that are kind of, they pull in you know what I'm talking about? Or like yep. the very back and they're kind of facing. Yep. And all I was thinking to myself is when the car line, because I'm never back that far, when it's back that far, how do those people get out? Or are they staff that's there later or something like that? Yeah, the, at the very back, those are students. And that's that's one of the tricks. Okay. And uh, the reason they're pulling through is to make it easier for them to exit. Um, because then it's whoever gets there first pulls through. We wanted them forward facing with student drivers or with anyone but especially yeah. student drivers needing to back out into traffic is more difficult right. one of the tricks though is that the fact that that lane if that is also the lane that's looping around so that's where we've had to work that out a little bit oh, okay. so we're trying to figure out and look at and you can see you know I, I love that we did what we did and Mr. LaPrette Mr. Hayne brought the students in brainstormed how do we assign spaces and the big the biggest deal for the kids was being with their friends right <laughs> But if we need to think about some other variables as we do this, like a variable being who's, who's leaving at three versus who's here till five o'clock because I've got practice and putting people who aren't leaving at that time in some of those spaces, that might be something we consider for the future. So there's different, there's different pieces, but honestly, we've kind of, without making adjustments every day, we said, let's just see how it plays out. You know, every day it's gonna get better. That first day you also had people taking selfies in front of the building and all those <laughs> things too. But, um, you know, and that did introduce some other uh, things at the middle school that Ms. O Dr. O'Connell's had to adjust as well with more students in earlier and, and the like. But I think that did make a big difference because people were keeping the kids in the car until, until 20 passed. Mm -hmm. And then um, once that was able to, it just opened up the line. So yeah, it's now been four days of that um, with the morning and, and the last three have been pretty smooth. It's, it's really cleared out. And then the afternoon, it's, we've gotten better every day. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, but there's certainly some adjustments we still need to make and we've got some good feedback and we've made some adjustments. So, um, so that's that piece. And, and, and I'll, I'll jump in because I came today just to kind of watch it um, just because I'm a dork like that. So I was just wandering around and you know, the, the lower drop off was very underutilized. I think that's an easy way if people need to. I mean, there was very few people doing that. That went pretty easily. But honestly, there was like no big backups at all today. And I was amazed at that. I mean, I, I wanna give a lot of credit to, you know, Dr. Daly, Mr. Connolly, but also, you know, you know, uh, Mr. LaPrat, um, you know, Mr. Hain, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Colleen, like everybody was kind of out there sort of making sure everything, you know, was moving smoothly. I appreciate, you know, the police department and all the, all the other people that have been, you know, working to make it happen. And I'll just say like, again, with anything, there's gonna be a trade-off, like when you have, you know, a thousand kids getting dropped off at once rather than two, you know, two groups of 500 being dropped off. But, you know, when I was talking to Dr. Daly this morning, he was saying like last year it took 15 minutes each time. It's taking 20 minutes for one, mm -hmm. you know? And so it's not all that much different. And there's a whole lot of good that came from this plan. You know, I mean, at the elementary level, having all three elementary schools at the same opening time mm -hmm. is a really big deal. You know, they, we were worried about letting high school or middle school out too late because people didn't want to be dismissed at 320, you know, because there's activities at their school. We didn't want to start, you know, elementaries any earlier. And so, you know, an eight o'clock and an 830 start time was the ideal thing. And I get that there's a little bit of trade off for that. But I think if everybody just keeps in mind the broader good here that's being done by this, 
you know, if it's five extra minutes, it's five extra minutes. But even then, it doesn't have to be. That little, that lower drop off is a five minute drop off. Right. So I applaud everybody for it. I think that, I mean, this morning I didn't see the pickup. I just saw the drop off, but the drop off went, you know, better than I would have expected. So I thought it was great. I think with the pickup, what I noticed, because I'm usually in the U, is that there's so many, and you can't avoid this, and it's to, it's fine, but there's so many kids coming out of the building, both of them at one time, it's hard to find your kid, and it's hard for your kid to find you. And yeah. so it holds up, like, those people that are in the U for, like, they're in there for the first seven minutes because they're, like, some kids are coming out a little later, and they're just waiting, and, I mean, it's even hard for me. I'm, like, kind of trying to yep. breeze through everyone seeing, so... That's yeah. a little bit challenging, but I think um, that will get easier as kids kind of, you know, get used to looking for their parents, where they're standing, that type of thing. I wouldn't want to change it because they should just have the freedom to do whatever they want to do when they get out. But yeah. I think well, that that kind of hangs things up a little bit. But that's true. At the elementary schools, I was saying to Mr. Ruckley this morning, we were able to call the kids as the parents pull up, but right. it's so many less kids that it's yeah. it's so different. Here it's just a lot, and it's... But again, it will it will continue to get better as people get used to this and make adjustments. And as you mentioned, all those adjustments was times. I think getting out at three, you know, I'm hearing so far so good with some of that. We are, you know, there's overall bus shortages. I think we've heard about this in the state. We're lucky um, with our driver situation that we haven't faced that. There are some issues with the uh, some transportation. There's just an overall shortage, um, you know, everywhere in the country. And so we're trying to make some of those adjustments. But Mr. Connolly's done a phenomenal job. Rosalie has done that as well with the buses. And just before we move on, I want to thank uh, Ms. Oliveto, the assistant principal, and Dr. O'Connell also. Oh, yeah. we, we did all of these um, traffic studies going back to last spring, met several times over the summer. There was a lot of work just in assigning those parking spaces. And one thing we realized is just how many staff members we've added since this building opened. I mean, the number of spaces mm -hmm. and the number of um, staff that we now have you know positions that we you know it's great that we keep adding some of these positions but it's like when you start counting spaces you realize wow there's there's a lot of people coming on this campus every day and i think that peace of mind knowing that there's a space for you um is is very helpful um so as as the students said you know that there's a there's a you know not in that driving around kind of looking for stuff people backing up trying to you know so that piece of it is much better well, when, Di when Diana has her big pink Hummer next time, <laughs> everybody will know exactly when she pulls in. So yeah. right. won't have, been, have an issue. No issues. <laughs> um, but I, I'll let Mr. Connolly perhaps speak a little bit to the busing, but I think the two tiers has allowed for some improved um, arrival times and pickup times at the schools. Um, it, you know, we were able to make those runs successfully. Um, I get the updates from the principals that, you know, some of them actually were saying, you know, you know we can't get there this early because um you know we want to make sure so th those issues that we've had in years past of waiting for that third tier or fourth tier of the buses to get back to the school kids getting there late we're not really hearing some of those issues there's always some adjustments to be made and and rosalie and, and michael have done a great job with that but michael i don't know if you want to update a little bit on the busing yeah yeah please thank, thank you dr daly so yeah i, I think um the busing operation has gone fairly well and overall we've been pleased with um you know given there was there was so much kind of you know new variables at play with, with the, the consolid, consolidation of the start time and then moving from four tiers to two um adding adding two additional buses which really did change all of the routes so there was, there was a lot of variables at, at play and i think i think the timeliness in in the scheduling um, has been fairly, fairly well. So, um, as Dr. Daly was just uh, alluding to, certainly things are a little bit easier when you move from a bus standpoint, just when you move from four tiers to two, if, if um, you know, something gets off due to a traffic situation or the bus has to go back, you, know, just, you have to just miss a few, a few students that stop for whatever reason or but turn around. It just, it doesn't have that ripple effect that um, it once did with the four tiering. Um, but you know, with the overall, certainly something has not been perfect. I'm not here to say anything has been has been perfect, but um, I think with the, the new company and several new drivers and new routes and new start times, with, with all that was thrown at the busing operation, I think I'm overall I've, I've been you know fairly pleased with how everything has gone. And it's gotten better, better every every day. Um, 
Yes, we were able to, on Friday, after reviewing two or three days worth of, of data by looking at the, the GPS system and just talking to principal and, and just getting a sense of what, what the bus for us was doing from a timing standpoint, I sent an email correspondence out to bus families um, and we were able to actually change the, you know, the starting times at the elementary schools um, and the middle school and the high school and actually make that first pick up later which is always a good thing. So instead of, um, I think we kind of conservatively went with about a 7, 10 a.m. pickup, um, just because we, we weren't sure we were gonna be 7, but we just, we thought earlier is better to start. Um, and just about half those groups or more were able to go to the 7, 15, or even 7, 20, to one to 7, 25 almost. So, um, so I think today was day one of doing that, and we were out there monitoring it, and I think Certainly the arrival times at the elementary schools were much better. Our goal was to have the, the buses arrive between 7.40 and 7.45 at the elementary schools, and I think we're almost right on that today um, at all three schools, all 12 buses. And then at the middle school and the high school, it was kind of across the board at 7.55 pickup, we were able to make some of those, or 7.50, even later. Um, like eight, you know, eight o'clock or a little after eight o'clock or 757, 758, we even did a few instances. But for the most part, all of the um, middle school and the high school buses really after almost the first day, even after the adjustment today at the elementary level, we were are arriving between 810 and about 825. It's just kind of, that allowed them to come kind of staggered, which is good. You have a few buses pulling at 810. Um, a few more pulling in about 8.15, 8.16, uh, a couple more pulling in about 8.20, and then you have a, a couple rolling in about 8.24, 8.25. So they're a little bit staggered because they're in the building at different, different times, which, which has worked out. Um, but the first couple of days, it was from 8, 8 a.m. arrival to the middle school and high school, and from 7, 7.30 um, <laughs> arrival at the elementary school. So we, we've adjusted for that, and I think, I, I think they're on a flow. I think that the drivers, um, I think know, know the students and, and know, know the, the routes better. So I think things are going to be more smooth. There were certainly some missed the miss shops and some missed students and a couple of upset families the first couple of days. And, I, and we kind of corrected those and worked through some of, the, some of those issues with the drivers and the company. So, um, you know, overall, I've been pleased with the bus operation. I am meeting with the bus drivers tomorrow at 9 a.m. after the morning run. Just to go over, just to recap the first week, hear from them, give their feedback, reiterate some of the safety things in North Reading, reiterate the, I think we're gonna start checking for bus passes a little bit. Um, we haven't done that, we're gonna do that the first week, but we're gonna start doing that more. Um, I think some of the buses might, I think it's, like, you know, um, you know living a little more crowded than we should be. So, we're, um, we're going to go through some of those, some of those, um, you know, important points about um, protocols and school safety and kindergarten students should really be sitting in the front and we may be thinking about reserving the first couple of rows for kindergarten and sixth graders and, and making sure all the drivers, have been, you know, some of them are new, some of them, some of them came in after I had the meeting um, that actually came in after we, I went over the these protocols. So we're going to go over some of those again tomorrow with with all the, the drivers that are in place at this point in which um I hope will help some of these last minute issues. So I I, I feel I feel pretty good pretty pretty good on everything. And then last thing I just last thing I just want to say we, we added the bus right software GPS scheduling routing system is um and we really got that going full year this year. So we, we tried it last year. Um it, there's only a couple of drivers that were willing to kind of to, to work with us on it. I think it was a little bit tricky last year because NRT was a Sonovia company and this was a bus ride system and that we, that we really wanted to go with. Um, and then with the, quite honestly, with the new company, we were able to come in right from the beginning with the new bid language and say, this is the requirement, you're required to get trained on it, we're gonna train you in August, and this is a system you need to use. So we, we believe in it, it's got some good safety features, it's got some good communication features that we want to start implementing and using. And they were very, very receptive to the system, which was great. Um, and the report that I've gotten from the drivers, and I stood out there and I talked to 
I have talked to them about it, is that they really like it. They, 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 they all like it and they think it's helping, helping them. So when there is a substitute driver, it, it's helpful as well. So, um, and I'm able to actually pull up on screen in um, the morning, watch all of the, um, the bus operation right on my screen, see, see where the buses are. I can um, scroll my mouse on top of the stop or, and see if I'm going to arrive at the stop at 7, 7.51. It's going to arrive to the <coughs> school at 7.49, and for the most part, that's what, that's what happens. So, um, it's been pretty, pretty neat. So we're like a little bit excited, a feature we're excited about. Um, and, you know, if things go well, we continue to, to work, you know, there's, there's additional features that we'll, we'll roll out and communicate out to even uh, parents down the road. That, that's the ultimate thing. Um, so with that being said, I'll just turn over any questions. Thank you, Michael. I think, I think all of us can, can imagine you sitting in your office watching every bus route <laughs> and click, clicking on all the different routes. But no, you've done a great job. I think that's, you know, I, I've harassed the crap out of um, Dr. Daly and Mr. Connolly this week just asking questions about how it's going. Because I know we've heard a lot about the bus shortages or the bus driver shortages. And so I think you've done an excellent job. You know, I really haven't heard any complaints um, about the, the only complaint at all was people, the buses were too on time. They were too early. People are assuming that, oh, if the first stop's at 7.50, I have till 8, 8.05, and they were actually not there. I mean, I know they've been pretty crowded, but pretty good. My only question for you is just on the, on the higher level at the administrative, administration level, I know we have a new company right now. Uh, I assume you've been having you know, talks with the owners or the people that run it. H how has it been dealing with North Suburban versus NRT? I mean, is it going pretty well there? Have they been receptive to everything? Yeah. Good, good question. They have, they have been receptive. I've been actually been, been pretty pleased so far with um, the, the, the internal uh, management and their dispatch. Very, very pleasant and responsive uh, to date when they're when we have had to call in and check on certain things or or get things corrected and uh, communicated out. So that that has been good. They've been receptive. I think they, I you know, I think they really are happy to be back in North Reading. And they they worked hard to, um, to 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 make this work and um, and to get us experienced drivers even when they had to find drivers kind of quickly. Um, I think they were able to do that. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm pleased with how everything is been going. I think what remains to be seen, and I've, I've talked to to Dave Johnson a little bit, the athletic director, is the athletic charter is going to be a little bit of a challenge. Um, and I don't think that's a North Reading issue. I think that's more of a universal issue. It's not a North Suburban issue. Um, it's, it's really an issue across uh, the state, potentially the nation right now, quite honestly. There's just the, that driver shortage. Um, we're fortunate that we have the, the regular, the regular educated drivers. We're gonna feel that a little bit, at least right now, on the athletic charter charter run. run. And we're, we're working to try to troubleshoot what, what we do. Um, but I think I'm hoping it's a short-term issue. I think the drivers that train that the in the pipeline will be training and to uh, and, and, and all the all companies, companies, including North Suburban. So I think once once, once they, they get, get cleared through the pipeline, pipeline licensing, licensing and, and, and so forth, which should happen by the end of the month, beginning of October, I believe the situation will be different. Um, but there could be a couple of um, of challenges there, and and it's again, it's not a it's not a North Suburban issue. It's really, you know, in, a, in even um, John McCarthy, who is the owner of, the, of NRT, who we had for a number of years, he has kind of been out ahead of it, sort of, he's even on the news kind of speaking towards it and informing athletic directors that they're working on it, but it, it could, it could, it's a little challenging right now. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> Michael, I don't know if you saw, but they, they've called in the National Guard in a few cities to, to start driving buses. So it's, it's, it's certainly a, a major issue. Um, and, and again, Michael and Rosalie have done a great job managing this. With both parking, pickup, drop-off, and busing, there's certainly been issues, and the people that have been affected, it's been a, it's been, especially for them, it's been a major impact. But I think overall, things are going well, and there's certainly things to address. So, you know, thank you, Michael. Yeah. You know, only other point I'll add there, which I don't know if we've got on the record here or not, but you know, even though it's a new company, they have all brand new buses too. Like, and that's yeah, that's thank you. Yeah, that's that's major. Beautiful. We meet Pat Daly and actually. Day before school, rode out to kind of check them and 
we're going to actually stock the buses with PPE. Um, we were in, um, we were impressed when we saw them in the lot. They were shining. They looked they looked beautiful. <laughs> they so, which that that's a big service issue go. too. I think I think you know I, there was a lot of breakdowns the last couple, few months of um, of the NRT. I think because the, well, the, you know the buses were about seven years old um, at that time, and um, we we were feeling that there was a lot of need to kind of switch switch get the students off one bus and go that was happening more than it should so it was great to see 12 shiny new buses yeah. great great excellent, excellent. thank you dr daly other topics for just, opening just a few other items just um covid testing is well underway i think our nurses have once again done a phenomenal job adjusting to this on the second day of school as i've communicated out um, we actually implemented test and stay so on the very first day of school, we had a positive individual. From there, we did testing, uh, contact tracing, I'm sorry. And from there, people that gave consent for test they were able to do it. So on the second day of school, three students who otherwise a year ago would have been out of school for seven days um, were, were now in school doing a test before school and continuing through that day. So that's fantastic. There's also options for in-school sports and in-school extracurriculars to continue with that test and stay option. So um, we've got well over um, about 1,200 people that have completed the, the form. We have one form that's the CIC form that's out there. And then we created a separate form for North Reading because in speaking with the lead nurse, uh, she and I realized you know we really want to give people the opportunity to differentiate their choice. We figure a lot of people want to do test and stay, but maybe they don't want to do the routine pool testing or and so we have, um, I know that it's, it's working because you know, many people have differentiated to the point that there's about 50%, um, there's only about 600 opting into pool testing and others that are doing tests this day. So the people can change their mind, let the nurses know. Um, I did adjust the form to make it even more clear that the North Reading form is really your opportunity to tell us which that you'd like to participate in. But we needed that information to plan our pool testing, which we've now, uh, extended to two days a week based on that number 600 was actually more than last year and um, we're gonna start next Monday with that so that'll begin next Monday we'll start calling students down there's a few different changes with that there's a few changes with the system as well um, it's a new provider and a new system and there's they're doing some onboarding so buying a little bit extra time there helped us with that uh, logistical piece as well so but I think we're, we're well underway we've been using those tastes we have um, to date, as of today, we have seven positive cases, um, which is you know concerning. But there's also you know a, a, we're, we're seeing a lot of transmission within families still at this point. We're not seeing a lot of transmission or no transmission at school. These are positive cases outside of school transmission, and then a lot of transmission within families, and that's led to some cases here. And again, out of those close contacts that we've had, I would say um, probably three quarters to maybe more than three quarters. Have been able to do test and stay now and are in school um, which which is great just to be clear test and stay does not apply to close contacts outside of school and the reason for that is in school we know that they are masked all day we know that they are three feet apart they're very closely monitored we see a lot more transmission at home and you're not able to to identify whether those students will become positive so um, if someone is a close contact outside of school the test and stay is not um, available and that I believe I've been clarifying it in my, in my communications to folks as well. So um, I think it's important that outside groups start to recognize you know, best practices so that they are not um, putting kids in a scenario where they would have to miss school. You know, sometimes it's unavoidable, but for example, whenever we're running an activity with, with unvaccinated children, if we can do it outside when the weather's nice, that, that certainly limits the number of close contacts. So trying to keep those um, ideas in mind as well. But overall, I think it's gone well. Um, there's a lot that our nurses have, have had to adjust to, but they've done a great job with that. And their principals as well with the contact tracing. Definitely busy all weekend once again um, with lots of calls. You know, so we're right back to that. Um, but they've done a great job. Um, and you know, I, last time we talked a little bit about guidance around October 1st. I have not heard anything more. There's no more metrics on that. I, based on the numbers that are coming out, I'm not imagining they're going to say things have, have all course corrected and we're going to just be ready for October 1st. I would anticipate some kind of an extension, uh, maybe, maybe more information around vaccination for younger children and an extension, but that's just my, my instinct. We'll, we'll have to see. I have not received any updates at this time. 
fun. Comments, questions? Ms. Oh, one second here, Ms. Cloney. And, um, any comments from the committee? The only, the only thing I'll say is I just want to reiterate what Dr. Daly mentioned there. Like, <clears throat> I know last year a lot of the contacts happened outside of school. And <clears throat> I would, not to put pressure on other people, but you know, the school committee rules or school rules only apply to school. And so, you know, North Reading youth, whatever, you know, sport or whatever, if they're having contacts and they're not wearing masks or they're not outside, it impacts the school and our rules don't apply to their leagues. And I think it's really important that those leagues and those organizations think about that because, you know, one nice thing about what's happened here at the school now is, as Dr. Daly said a couple of times, there's a lot fewer close contacts, a lot fewer people that are going to be out of school now because of the rules that we have in place. And if they're not being followed outside of, outside of the school and other organizations and groups, you can have one case, get a bunch of students that are out for an extended period of time. And so I think it's really important that those groups really think about that and you know, look at their own protocols. So any other comments? Jody. Uh, so so say, say your, your name for the record, just to be sure, just to be clear. What? Say, say your name and address for the record. Jody Cloney, 365 And hang on, let me, let me bring you this up too. Just be, you know what, I'm gonna just give you this one. Yeah. This is just so you can be heard on NORCAM. No, no, that's fine. I should come up so that you will like. You can come up closer. This is, this is the first class service here, Jody. I know. Jody. I, know. Um, I wouldn't that closer, but there was so many people here. I know. <laughs> um, so, Dr. Daly, my only question, is, which is quick, is how does it work for close contacts for, like, um, um, activities for the kids, like, high school sports or high band and stuff, does that count for test and stay or those activities that are run through the school? Sure, it, did, did you, you did, I don't think you got to say your address and name. I, oh, I, sorry, I, 365 Park Street. Okay, thanks. I, I might have missed it. Um, so yes, yeah, so test and stay, if, if it's an in-school close contact, students are able to participate in school sponsored sports and activities on that same day. Um, that would include athletics, robotics, um, chorus, band, play, drama, those type of things. Um, so outside of school events, students would still be in, in a quarantine protocol. So they really should be quarantining um, from, other, from other activities. So that's something that we're trying to get more guidance on and more advice on. So sorry I wasn't clear. I meant if their close contact was during, let's say, um, marching band. Like, would they be eligible for test and stay? Because marching band is run through school. Yes. Um, so that counts, they could still do test and stay if they were a close contact from, say, marching band or a football team or something like that? Or that's, so, I guess, my question is, sure, if it's a school sure. activity but not in school. So yes, the answer is yes. Okay. The, the, other, the other clarification is if any of those activities are outside, they wouldn't be close contacts to begin with. Okay. So football, um, you know, so it would have to be like if they're in the locker room for an extended period of time or you know if band was practicing indoors but because of the school protocols that are in place because of the uh, you know we have a school nurse on site all day who's managing this they're they're eligible for test and stay from school sponsored activities thank you yep um i mean again i i know there's a lot going on but i applaud you know the the leadership here and starting this and it's been a smooth first few days and knock on wood let's hope that that continues Thank you very much, Dr. Daly. Can I ask a quick question? Sure. If, a, if a parent hasn't filled out the form yet and their, and their child is identified as a contact, can they then opt in to the test and Absolutely. stay? Absolutely, yeah, it's, it's, it's almost instantaneous. I mean, it's so, the, 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 both forms need to be filled out. The, on the spot, the one that has to be filled up before you can have a test is the CICH form. And that's their, the, the provider, that's the state form. And so that is a simple drop down menu, choose your school, enter a few names, and you're good. And you're providing consent at that time to all three. And so it's sort of a blanket consent. And then the other form is where, like I said, you can differentiate and let us know, hey, just because I gave consent to all three, I, I, I don't really want, want my child called down for pool testing and all that stuff. And that's, that's then noted in that system. And so what we've done, you know, with our first three, uh, you know, you could do a paper form as well. So we kind of went out to the car, and by the time we got out there, the parent had already got the email, completed it on her phone, and it was, it was in the system. So it's that easy, that simple to do um, to provide the consent. And that certainly happens. And you can also change your mind. If you've opted out 
and then you realize like, oh, opting out means I now, my child has to be missing this number of days of school. I want to opt in for test and stay. They, that could happen as well. Right. So that's where, you know, I, I, I'll be honest with you with the number 1200, I have not run that completely for duplicates. Right. So there's probably a few in there. Um, but that's, that's a pretty good number with um, of returns to, to date for that, so. Yep. Excellent. Any other thoughts, comments, questions? Okay, <coughs> moving on. I think I'm missing a page on this, but I think we have school committee goals action plan as the next thing on our agenda. <laughs> Dr. Dale, you want to discuss this? You want me to kind of lead this? Would... I think the, uh, yeah. maybe I would just sh share that the policy subcommittee met and reviewed. Um, uh, I'm sorry, no. <laughs> the evaluation subcommittee met? No, 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 the goals the action goals. plan, that the, we're gonna have our goals. <laughs> No, because there's a page missing from this one, from the published one. The agenda, the, the agenda that was posted had the school committee goals action plan on there as well that was shared, right? I think that's our goals. Okay. Yeah, yeah, correct. Correct. And so we're gonna are we gonna adopt this tonight and kind of talk a little bit about what that is? Yes. Okay. So I was saying that the evaluation subcommittee met and we <laughs> revised the goals oh, from okay. our goals workshop. <laughs> and and condensed it down to um, it's the page that you see here. We've identified the goals. We renamed the goal, um, the objective to a goal, and we renamed the action steps to actions to try to keep that language. Um, and then in parentheses, it's really mostly for for our internal mm -hmm. knowledge. But in parentheses is the name of the school committee member who's the point person for the goal. <clears throat> and so I don't know whether. Uh, I think it, I think it's worth I mean I think it's worth kind of going through and sure just for the people that are here because I know there's been there's been lots of talk and I mean again there's only Jody here but there's been lots of talk in the past about what our role is and what our goals are and so I think it's good just to read in the record kind of what it is so there's four areas that we particularly are trying to you know be heard on and so the first one is leadership and governance so what we wanted to do this year was rather than have a whole list of things like, oh, we we're going to pass a budget this year. Obviously, we're going to have to pass a budget. We do that every year. So what we've tried to do is just like the administrators, just like all the teachers, really focus on a couple of action plans for this year. So for leadership and governance this year, we put that the committee will engage in one professional development presentation session related to school committee responsibilities and authority under Mass General Laws. Because that, that's come up quite a bit about what is our authority, what's the Board of Health's authority, what's Desi's authority. So Chris is going to lead that one. Oh, no, Janine is going to lead that one. <laughs> Under financial and asset management, we are gonna we had a goal. The school committee will support the development of the plan to reduce the kindergarten fees, leading towards the eventual elimination uh, you know, of the fees so that we can provide free full-day kindergarten. Diana is going to lead that one. Uh, the school committee will explore new opportunities to reduce expenses associated with energy costs specifically solar power, that's gonna be assigned to me. The next area is educational programming um, and the action plan, the action goal for this year is the school committee will participate in a working group to explore the ways to be more involved in the district's exploration of the topics of equity, diversity, and inclusion. That's what Chris is gonna be leading. And then under family and community relations, the action plan we had was the school committee will design and implement a process to provide opportunities for hybrid public meetings and to explore ways in which to continue to provide avenues of public input to enhance public participation in school committee meetings and that's Rich's uh, function just because now with the new meeting set up we want to make sure that we are doing it well so I didn't know it went to the evaluation subcommittee sorry I thought you were going on to the next yep. subcommittee thing no, it's okay. ah. well, we okay. just did the work to uh, to kind of finalize it and clean it up and finalize it, it. Yeah. so I think we're gonna have a I'll entertain a motion to accept the North Reading School Committee goals for 2021-2022. Chris moves. I'll second. Janine seconds. Any more comments? Okay, we'll do a roll call vote. Chris? Aye. Janine? Aye. Rich? Aye. Diana? Aye. I'm an aye as well, 5-0. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Now the superintendent's evaluation goals. <coughs> Thank you so much. <coughs> go so we also uh, as a part of that subcommittee meeting met to review uh, the superintendent schools for for the new year I think uh, as an overall comment some of the feedback I received was you know in your first three it's sort of this balance between in your first few years um, trying to 
keep keep some certain goals together and be continuously with them and other ones to identify areas that are strengths and weaknesses so some areas where i was rated high some feedback was well you may want to consider a different goal um the one thing i wanted to add at the outset is that you know and again knock on wood this is going to be a typical year although we're back in mass and all that but i think some of the things that i've done well um let's say with communication that i've gotten some positive feedback on i was communicating in a COVID year and it's really finding that balance of what that looks like in a typical year that I still feel I need some growth and development so in those areas where those goals are similar I feel like there's a reason to differentiate it because hopefully this year is, is not going to look exactly like last year um, but you know similar th this year it's a real focus on NRPS 2025 and working with the school improvement plans for that further alignment I think we've seen some of that work and development and that's that's really going to be my goal that's going to be carried through to the administrators goals it'll be in their school improvement plans and you'll see that in the in the presentations throughout the year um, my my second goal is my uh, professional practice goal around uh, my own personal development and leadership skills and participating continue to participating in year three of the new superintendent induction program uh, through the superintendents association um, in my partnerships and collaborative groups through Merrimack Valley Superintendents Association, SEAM Collaborative, uh, and, and many other areas with job alikes. So my participation and work in those groups is part of that goal. Um, my first district goal is about getting NRPS 2025 up and off the ground. And, and really, you know, some of that work you've seen over my goal from last year through the work this summer and through updates that you'll be hearing more about over the course of this year. So really getting that um from the stages it's in now to an actually articulated uh multi-year strategy will be the goal for this year for the second district goal it's really still a little bit about um continuing to work with COVID-19 as I think this is still there um and to also what I partner with this because I do believe that um there's more to this is this concept around the department's um acceleration roadmaps which I have learned were not a reaction to COVID, but they tailored them to fit COVID. So they already had these deep dives into deeper learning and acceleration as a concept and a lot of materials that are gonna be great for our educators and our families to use with students. And then trying to figure out how that is working with all the new COVID um, you know, response that we, we have in the district. So continuing that goal for this year. My third goal, um, is about communication as i mentioned so again i think this is something that i'm still working on still trying to continue what works and then also trying to figure out you know i i, I jokingly said my smart goal this year is to communicate like 92 percent less than i did last year right so um but i think right now i still have to find that right balance and then hopefully in a typical year trying to find a way to to remain um you know communicative but but not overwhelming and i want to i want to be relevant i don't want to people just see spam another school message just to leave right so i need to find that right balance um, but i accept 92 percent less yeah <laughs> i know i know but um i just feel right now there's just too much that's critical to, to report uh, but trying to find out ways to do that trying to find that balance between what's a what's a full blast what's just an email what's a text what's a blog update what's a tweet you know trying to find that, that that sweet spot of communication is is part of this goal um, and then the fourth district goal is to um, continue to look into this concept around social justice we have uh, our new um, diversity equity inclusion coordinator multi-district from seam and so a lot of the steps here you know this is a part of our plan our action plan for north reading and really finding out what the next steps are for us as a district as a leadership team um, to be able to start uh, working to strengthen uh, this area of our curriculum and our hiring practices and you know everything we're doing here and also to deal with there's a lot of you know as we are well aware there's a lot of um, political conversation around you know what this looks like what this oh, should wait, look like what it shouldn't look like Chris, so. can, can we not hear we probably oh, yeah probably. Cindy yeah. raised her hand too that's why I was like you probably lost it are we off no no vit no okay here. I just turned my mic on so people can hear there. So. I blow up my screen, Chris, so I couldn't see you. Yeah. <laughs> <Ginny> was. 
Welcome to Google Me. Enter the meeting bit. Thank you. It never Keep happened. When it's happened recently, but it never happened. Uh, Early on, I, I don't remember. Yeah, no, I only. It doesn't make any more sense. recent uh, phenomena. Can you hear us, Chris? You're muted because a lot of people are on this call. Press star six to unmute. <coughs> the call is being recorded. Get my steps in. <laughs> you unmuted yourself. This, this will be one of the things I'll work on as part of improving yes. the setup. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll Chris, can you hear us? Cindy, we'll can you hear us? That one out. Yeah. Thank Excellent. You. So this fourth goal is about exploring um, the concept of, of social justice and working with our new um, multi-district DEI uh, coordinator to try to think about how we can, you know, do this correctly and work well with our, um, with our leadership team as well as our community to try to, you know, move this important work forward. Also being mindful of, of the concerns that are out there about, about this going in the wrong direction and trying to make sure that we're doing um, doing this work in a well coordinated way. So, um, and those are the goals <coughs> that are proposed. Excellent. Any questions, comments, thoughts? Committee first? I, um, yeah, I, I think the communication one is, is interesting and, and tricky, right? Because one of the things that's going to happen if this is a more normal year is that there'll be more normal things to communicate that we didn't, you probably didn't communicate about last year because things many things weren't happening or as many things weren't happening so yeah. you know making it clear that the differentiation between hey this is normal school stuff that's you know as opposed to covid you know that, that'll be the tricky part but right. it, it's a good uh, it's a good way to focus for sure well, I, I mean i think on communication one thing that i or two things i would say number one <laughs> I joked about the 92 percent, but um, honestly, like I, if there's if you're gonna err, err on the side of over communicating versus under communicating. <clears throat> so I think that's always good. But I think one idea could also be like, you know, even if there was like a weekly bulletin or something like where you put a few things in one, you know, like if there was just like <clears throat> like a lot of the teachers now have started doing that, where like a lot of my kids' teachers once a week I get an email and says, here's what's coming up, here's what happened last week or whatever. Um, that could be something and then anything that's not you know like every friday afternoon or whatever or every monday morning you know you get that one so then maybe some of those things can just be in in a weekly bulletin type type email but john used to do a quarterly newsletter <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. there's just so much information yeah. coming so quickly and it's like so right you gotta be but no, i agree i agree with you that those yeah. are the kind of things that i want to adjust to to see yeah how it works so no but and, and again like over communicate i mean I, we joke about it but like Again, I would much rather have somebody say, I'm, I'm getting too many emails, rather than I didn't know that was happening or. Right, especially uh, about important changes to, uh, like, like you couldn't communicate enough about the uh, traffic patterns and all that, I mean. Yeah. yeah, I mean, worst comes to worst. You didn't read it, you didn't read it. You know, that's on you, it's not on us for not telling you, so. Okay. And then this is the uh, timeline would be, you know, again, there's a, this is a, a formative uh, year, so we'll do a formative review around March, um, and a summative in the summer. And then my goal would be, if if, if all goes well at the end of this, that I could move then to a, a multi-year cycle, yep. um, like a lot of our educators after three years. So, and I know that there's an. Uh, did you share with everybody the evaluation like yes. that, that webinar? I'm trying. I can come, but I don't know if anybody from the committee is going to be able to go, but. Oh, yeah. yeah. Evaluation. It's Friday at noon. I can forward it Friday. out. Anyone yeah. that wants to join can join as yeah. right. Especially and you people meet, that are on you, there. Could, you could all go and meet one of your goals for the year, too. Um, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> or, the people, or the person who has that goal or is on the evaluation yeah. subcommittee yeah. can go. <laughs> um, okay. Any other comments, thoughts? Okay. So I guess are, we, are these able to be approved at this point? Are we, are we good with these? Evaluation subcommittee? Feel comfortable? Yeah. I don't know who the advisory subcommittee is now. Is it you and Chris? Chris, yes. yes. Okay. Okay, so I'll entertain a motion to accept uh, Dr. Daly's superintendent evaluation goals for 2021 to 2022. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Chris, second by Janine. We'll do a roll call vote. Chris? Aye. Janine? Aye. Diana? Aye. Rich? Aye. I'm an eye as well. Passes 5-0. Good luck, Dr. Daly. <laughs> Thank you. You're going to need, okay. I mean, no. <laughs>
Routine matters, all the fun stuff here. So minutes, I'm gonna turn it over to Janine to lead us with minutes. Certainly. Um, I'd like to make a motion to accept the August 30th executive session, session minutes as written. Second. Okay, any discussion, anything up on this? Not that I saw. Okay, I guess I have to do roll call vote since Chris is not here again. I'm just kidding. Uh, Janine. Aye. Diana. Aye. Chris. Aye. Rich. Aye. I'm an I as well, five zero. I'd also like to make a motion to accept the August 30th open session minutes as written. Second. Again, any comments, questions, changes? No. Okay. Janine. Aye. Diana. Aye. Chris. Aye. Rich. Aye. I'm an I as well, passes five zero. Thank you very much. Budget update, Mr. Connolly, I assume no. If you're still here. Yeah. Not, not okay. Yeah, there's no. Thank you very much. Uh, staffing, Dr. Daly. Just a few uh, updates at the Bachelor School: Jennifer Coffin, special education teacher; Aaron Tierney, special education paraprofessional; at the Hood School, Caitlin O'Connell, special education paraprofessional with the Rise Program; Aaron Cordes, special education paraprofessional; at the Middle School, Kelly Platt, a long-term sub as an English language arts teacher. Catherine Maloney, a special education paraprofessional. The high school, Vincent Papagiorgio, long-term sub special education teacher. Jenna Gross uh, Grossman, long-term sub guidance counselor. And at the district level for food service, Diane Varney is a food service associate at the Melrose, uh, I'm sorry, at the middle school, <laughs> high school. <laughs> okay. Very good. Well, welcome to the new staff members. <laughs> okay, bids and donations, not at this time. Yeah. Subcommittee updates, evaluation subcommittee. Apparently you guys met and talked about things that I didn't realize. So yeah. <laughs> well, any updates other than what we went over? You've seen the whole show now. <clears throat> You've seen the whole show? Yeah. Anything no. else? No? No, nothing else to be added. Policy subcommittee, same group? Yeah. We um we looked at a couple of policies that uh Daily brought to our attention that uh, we'll be doing a little bit more research into, and we discussed setting up some sort of long term system for regular intervaled uh, policy review by the committee just to kind of stay abreast of things. Excellent. Excellent. Subcommittee okay. schedule we have finance planning team tomorrow morning at, at 8 15 again, and I think that's the only thing on the agenda. I believe so, yeah. That was not there at press time. No, that was new. That was That's new. Um, I think we're mainly just going over uh, October town meeting stuff. Yes. Just, yeah. Um, administrative report. So I'm just passing around. Um, I, I realize the attachment didn't go through, so I'm sorry. But this is just a, a sample survey. For ESSER 3, which are funds that we need to um, expend, and Mr. Connolly and I are going to be working on this grant, we have to put out and get some feedback from the community, um, all stakeholders, about how we're spending those funds. And so I'm going to just share this sample survey. If you approve, I would send this out. Um, you know, I don't think we need a formal approval, but just, you know, um, we can if you'd like to. But I would send it out to all stakeholders in the community about how we're using the resources that are available to us um, with ESSER 3 funds. It's about $400,000, I believe. Um, what are these particularly supposed to go towards, you know, like one of the areas? It's COVID relief, um, but certainly mental health can be there, acceleration, you know, how we're working with students, um, adjusting from last year and some of those challenges. And so this will be an opportunity to just gather more information from stakeholders. There's some um, key areas of focus that are in there, and that's one of the questions to gauge um, the interest in those key areas as well as some opportunities for some um, open comment if people want to share their ideas. And, and, and just to be clear from looking at this and overall, I mean, the district has many needs. And so I'm sure that regardless of what it is, we, there's, there's projects that we can do on it. We'll be able to use the funds and maximize whatever we have, but it'll just help. I think what we've seen in the last year is these ESSER funds have really helped us to accelerate some of the, some of the long-term plans as well, which is nice. And so, yeah, I mean, it'd be good to hear from the community on what they prioritize because again, I think there's needs in every area that we could address. It's just a matter of making sure that we are focusing on what needs the most immediate, you know, attention. So, and I'm sure that the, the formula that was used is similar to some of the formulas for other grants. We didn't get, you know, many other districts received in the millions of dollars. We received 
uh, a sizable amount, but it's not quite what some other districts have. You know, we, we have a few staffing needs, nurses, technology, um, some of those positions we created, we would love to sustain those. And so that very quickly spends a chunk of that money on staffing, but I think those staff members in key places pay dividends over multiple years. You know, so additional nursing, additional adjustment counselors, additional technology support, um, you know, certainly can touch on a lot of those key areas. So that's, you know, one of the areas that we would be thinking about. And I think the survey suggests some of that as well. So I, you know, there were some surveys shared around from multiple districts. This is one from, I believe, Norfolk Public Schools that I liked a lot and adapted for, for our use, so. On the other hand, you could open up some parking spots. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, okay, I mean, uh, the, the survey looks fine to me. I mean, I think, I think the key thing is to put the areas that ESSER can be used for that we think have the greatest needs. And so if these are the areas that you think have the most needs that are able to be used for the funds, I think that's what we should be asking. Great. Anybody else have thoughts? Nope. And that would go out very soon. Mr. Connolly and I will just kind of look this over again, maybe share it with the finance planning group tomorrow um, for some input there from that group initially too. They, they could even help complete it as community members um, and town officials to help us think through this, so. Excellent. Um, no, no correspondence to share? Nope, none at this time. <clears throat> Future business, September 25th. We have a meeting scheduled for 6.30. Um, that'll be just like this one again, hybrid. October 4th is North Reading Town meeting, so we'll probably meet, at, are we gonna meet at 6.30 before then or whatever probably? We likely will have a session to, to begin. Um, this is how it's listed. There's still a few details uh, to come out about that. It's going to be located here at the building and uh, 7 p.m. is the start time, so we'd probably start a little bit before that. And do we know if it's gonna be, which, where it's gonna be, gym or performer era? Uh, it's era? still, some of that needs to be still settled up. Right now it's at this campus. That's how it's okay. posted, I believe. And then we're going to figure out some of the finer details. I'll be here. Janine yeah. will not be here. So. There are some pros and cons, I think, to the different areas. You know, access, um, ability to space out. You know, so the gym is favorable for some things and the pack for other things. So yeah. we're still working on some of those details. But there, um, the location will be here. Okay. And then October 25th. Uh, North Reading Public School update capital improvement plan. So it's a general meeting here as well. And if we need more in between them, depending on what Desi says, we will yep. schedule them. Yep. But that's all we have on the agenda. Anything else that we need? We can follow the select board's lead and just start talking about whatever we want if we'd like, or we can just <laughs> have a motion to adjourn right now. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. I'll second. Okay. Rich, right. Janine, Aye. Diana, Aye. Chris, Aye. I'm an I as well. Five zero. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. <laughs>